Hello, people. It's me, Jess, here with another reading. Hello, and welcome to my channel. Today, I was hoping to do a juicy reading on does this person have a crush on you? But I wanted to say before we jump into this, um, I've just really noticed recently that a lot of these piles, they seem to be like mix and match and overlapping. And so I just, I just wanted it to be something to pay attention to that you could be drawn to more than one pile. And if you get a pile that has your own energy reflected back at you, that you might want to pick a different one to see if that fits the situation, but it seems like it's more from your person's perspective. Um, I've just noticed that recently that all of these piles seem to be, I don't know, interwoven in some beautiful, magical way that I don't understand. So with that being said, um, I've got three piles here for our reading. Pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. So I'll put the picture up if you want to look at that. Otherwise, I'll see you watch your piles. Right. Pile number one, does this person have a crush on you? Yes. Yes, they do. And this person is in some heavy denial about that crush that they have on you. Um, and I wouldn't, this person, hmm, they're not so much burying their feelings. That's not their style. Well, they kind of are, but they're doing it very much. This person has a rich inner world and I feel like this person actually cultivates quite a bit of inner wealth. Like they're very beautiful on the inside as a person. Um, and part of that, part of how that has come about is they have a very strong inner dialogue with themselves. Um, and that's part, that inner dialogue seems to be very involved in their feelings with you. And I'm just, it's got them all tangled up and all twisted up. And on some level, that's exactly kind of what this person wants. That's their chosen method of keeping them in denial about their feelings when it comes to you, because this person tells themselves that only pain can come from, I think even exploring their, the romantic feelings that they have, or the se certainly sexual attraction here, like the, those feelings that they have, only pain will come um, for themselves and for other people. And that just doesn't seem to wanna to be an option here for this person. They don't wanna cause either themselves or others pain in regards to this. So that actually um, brings me to another thing that this person is really doing to deny their feelings, which is that this, it's still their mind, but um, their mind is presenting them, their crush on you as a choice for them. At least as a choice for them, like how to engage with, and that's all they tend to focus on. They don't focus on the feelings. They focus on the choice of it. And because this person is now split, because of this energy, they're split. And I'm very much getting like the angel and the devil here. Yeah, this is actually showing up as um, id, ego, super ego, but just exactly as this was like designed to function. So what I'm calling this person's inner dialogue, I feel like is actually their ego because um, ego, psychologically speaking, has a function. It's the deliberator. It's supposed to um, sort things out into categories and then help you deliberate. Now, healthily, it shouldn't make the decision. And I don't feel like it has here. But um, so what this person, they're, it's framing them. It's framing this as a choice for them. And it's saying, look, what you want from this person is um, your lower self, your id, your more animalistic, primal nature self wants to go towards them and slobber all over them and, um, you know, cause yourself and everyone else a bunch of pain and havoc, you know, and just be in this animalistic furied frenzy. But there's another side of you that doesn't want that. And this person's super ego, by the way, is very, very, very developed. It's very strong here in this person. Um, that says, it's like the conscience, right? That says like, we got to do the right thing here. So this person's ego has come in and said, you know, you don't want to cause pain to yourself or others. So yes, this is a choice, but this, you're, you have to understand that's your lower yourself and your lower nature. And that's really not even an option. So the only other choice here is to move away here from this person. And that's really what this person wants out of the situation. Um, so, and it wouldn't surprise me if this person actually already has ended things between you because they're seeing you as an end of a cycle here. And um, so if they've done that, I feel like they did it in no uncertain terms where it's like the nail is in that coffin. You cannot get back in that door. And that's because that's exactly what this person wants. Ten of Swords is a painful ending. 
Um, but with it comes the promise that you won't experience any more pain in regards to this situation. Um, so it's very like rip the bandaid off kind of a thing, but pain might be an extreme word here for this. This person feels like certainly discomfort and anxiety. And that is because this person is, person is in strong push, pushy energy. They are very spiritual. They are very religious. And at that place in the Zodiac, um, there, it's the divine priest to the gods, that energy. But they start to feel the pull into like the material world. And that can be sexually or that can be through luxuries or things like that. We start to feel it and they really resist it at that stage because um, they don't want to get their legs knocked out from under them and just get swept up by the current. So there's something here about this dynamic with you and their feelings. It feels very risky. It feels very much like a threat um, to you. Now, okay. I want to talk about why this person feels attracted to you, but um, this is a past life connection for sure. Like, I don't know if you feel that energy here with this person, but it absolutely is um, with this mercury water energy. This is like the, for me, it's the poisonous root of our past lives. So you've had past lives with this person and there's certain things that have gone like kind of unresolved. And those have shown up here within this connection you have with this person as karmic lessons for both of you. And it's helpful not to think of that as punishment, but as an opportunity to grow and think of it as, an, as uh, there's something about you that's out of joint, right? And, and it's just pu pulling things back into harmony, putting things back into joint so it functions kind of proper. So there's a sense here that this person feels on some level that they've ended a connection with you with unresolved issues, but then this person also acknowledges that they're part of their karma or their lesson or um, how they're out of alignment with truth energy here is that they need to really start exploring um, some self-esteem issues that have come up in regards to you and this connection. And I think it's important that you understand this about this person. And maybe I'll get into this more later, but this is not a naturally insecure person. It's a, it's a function of this, this dynamic and this connection that's gone on here between the two of you. And that seems to be um, connected here to past life energy on this person's side. So this person, like I said, they're very there's a strong sexual attraction here. This person's not acknowledging it, but there is a strong just sexual pull um, here towards you. This person sees you as someone who is, I heard beautiful in my head, um, strong, very confident, very independent, somebody who is able to be a very good leader and um, delegate certain things out. And I'm also hearing phases. Like you're really good at understanding like what phase needs to come before another phase, come before another phase. You're very good at holding like the full picture, but then breaking it down into small parts. And this person finds that, um, that way of being like just very, very attractive. They also think that you, there's definitely a group around you here. So I think that you're um, a leader. A lot of you are entrepreneurs and you have like an overall plan for yourself or for this group or something like that. You're very much like the drummer of the group. There's something about you that just naturally tends to command some kind of respect and this person finds that attractive, but they also, this person feels that you're superior and there's not like an emotional or subjective quality from this person's side when they say that at all. It seems very factual because this person thinks that you've worked really, really hard um, to get this for yourself, to build a business that you have, to build some kind of a skill set that you have to a place where, um, it's, it just is superior. Like it's just something you've worked hard towards and you, you're starting to really bloom and blossom and develop the fruit of all of that hard work. And so that's, and maybe this person actually thinks that you've had a bit of a difficult life. Um, and maybe have moments where this person thinks maybe, um, because you are superior that you can come off like hypocritical or maybe arrogant or brash. But again, this person thinks that you maybe come by that honestly or something. Um, this person though, they remember I was telling you like their mind tries to convince themselves that like they don't have a crush on you really, or they try, it tries to like diminish this. This person sort of thinks that you are the type of person that a lot of people have a crush on. And so like, it's almost a way that this person feels like they don't need to put any stock into their feelings for you or into their relationship. It's not something they need to pursue or like move towards because it's just the nature of you. It's just something that comes with the territory when you develop yourself to a place that you have, you know, that's kind of how this person's looking at it. And, um, this person, there's a lot of people around you and we've seen this energy here before, um, this quality of this group that's around, it's very yin groups in general are yin, but this is a group that is very, it has like a very sweet, loving, feminine nature to it. They're very caring people or, um, there's a love of humanity of 
bettering oneself, of being very beautiful, possibly very spiritual. Maybe this group stands out from like regular society in some sort of a way, but there's a lot of women in it. And the men that are there, we've talked about this, they are very, they're more refined. They talk about high-minded subjects. They can be very conversational. Um, these are people that maybe in something that they do for a living, they help negotiate contracts and be very diplomatic. And they tend, these other men tend to really like the company of women. They just prefer it or they like the conversation that they can have with women versus men, you know? Um, but this person does see that there's a lot of women around you and that a lot of these people in general just tend to have a crush on you. And they also think you have a crush on a lot of these other people for, um, yeah, I know they just think that you are maybe very flirty or very open in that way. And so, and this person doesn't think that you find them beautiful. Like this person that you're asking about, they don't think you even hardly notice them. But if you did, if you did say something that was kind of flirty towards this person, they would think you say that it's just like, you say that to everyone and you just always have these women around or these men around and then you just say, that kind of stuff, you know? Um, okay, so not only that, but this person actually sees that there's somebody around who really, really has caught your eye and um, it's not them. This person, you could be married to this person with this being the empress or you could just be in a relationship here with this person and this person is very beautiful and um, not, not them. Like this person that you're asking about here, understands that they are very much not like this other person that and they don't want to be like this other person so there's just um a difference there so they they feel that the kind the either the person that you're attracted to or the types that you are attracted to it's not them and this is what i mean where there's this weird like past life karmic root that's coming through here because this is not an insecure person normally nor should they be oh my gosh whoa What's going on here? Okay, there's a bit of a misunderstanding here between the two of you. And I think both of you, you're so polarized, whoa. You're coming through as gesture energy. This whole reading you have been. So I don't know if you have strong gesture in your chart, but that is, um, it's the last nakshatra in Scorpio and it is the most polarized masculine nakshatra of the whole zodiac. And it's associated with the desert. So um, a lot of times like people who have strong gesture, they can have a very gravelly voice that sounds like very dry. And their energy is very dry because it's the feminine that is the lubricant, you know, and <laughs> oh boy, I didn't mean it like that, but it's also true in that way. So um, actually people who are at a gesture stage in development, they do tend to draw a lot of feminine energy around them in order to provide that lubricant. And I'm hearing myelin sheathing from like a neuron. It is like, it provides that like fatty, slippery nature to where it helps shoot those electrical messages through the neuron. And that is very much like Jesha individuals need to build that myelin sheathing for themselves to progress in the next level of soul development. And Jesha is actually, they, they tend to master and dominate the material world, especially early on in their life because Jesha, we talk about this a lot, it's that Gandanta point. And after Jesha, all the nakshatras that come after Jesha, they cannot gain the same level of satisfaction out of the material world because they've seen through it. And they it, that is the part where it's the joint that really tips you more towards the spiritual side of things, where you start to throw yourself very fully into developing yourself spiritually. And on some level, Jesha individuals tend to know this. Um, so there can be a real tendency towards excess of all kinds, all the material comforts, having a lot of partners, everything because they're really it's like a going out of business sale for like all the materialistic aspects of the world and that's why this person senses that there's a reason you have all this feminine energy around well there is it might not may or may not be why you know they think usually jesha individuals go through a, a stage where they they do have a lot of partners um but the reason why I think that's interesting is because you're showing up as very polarized masculine and this person's showing up in pusha energy which is the most polarized feminine nakshatra of the zodiac. And that's what I was getting ready to say is that the cards are being very clear that this is a beautiful person, objectively. This person has a very like natural beauty towards them and Pusha Nakshatra is known for producing that in people, um, especially in people who are very feminine. But masculine, if you're asking about a male or a female, this person might have like strong feminine qualities. Usually Pusha makes the eyes very sparkly and clear. Um, it, they have like a nice um, cheekbone structure about them and they their teeth. 
you can usually tell Pusha individual from their teeth. There's like a certain look to it. I wish, I, I'm actually Pusha rising and my teeth are like, if, if you've seen me on this channel, like the way that I look, my teeth are very Pusha. Um, and a lot of times like Pusha can have very, like they don't have to get braces or anything like that. They have very, like, very nice teeth. And um, they also, it's considered the most auspicious nakshatra and they are the divine priests um, and priestesses to the gods. That's that strong super ego that we are sensing here in this person. Not only this, so this person has that kind of beautiful quality to them that's very feminine, but with the Mars conjunct um, sun energy over here, Mars makes people very well formed. So this person actually could have maybe like a slim thick build because Mars can be very juicy and voluptuous on a woman, but um, combined with the Saturnian energy, there's like some muscle tone and things like that. It doesn't have to be. I feel like this person's very well proportioned in their body though, regardless of if they're smaller or bigger or somewhere in between, no matter what it is, this person is like very well proportioned. And I get the sense that this person actually might um, hide that a bit. And that's a negotiation that every individual kind of makes for themselves, um, depending on their own perspectives on the issue. This person might veil, for instance, and that would be on the more extreme end. Or it's just that maybe this person doesn't do their makeup or they don't paint their nails or, you know what I mean? It's like, there's a, there's a part, there's an aspect to this person where they are not vain and they seek that to not, to, to actively kind of put a lid on it. Remember I said there's a strong drive in this person to not fall prey to the indulgences of the material world, to not get their feet knocked out of them in some way. So in this person's personal grooming and appearance, this person watches out for their health. They actually could be very athletic. Um, Mars tends to move the body in very elegant and rhythmic sort of a way. Um, and this person, maybe they work out, they take care of their physical health. Um, there is that sense here to this person. Now, okay, the reason I feel like you could have gotten the wrong idea of this person, and people get the wrong idea of you because each of you, you're so polarized masculine, this person's so polarized feminine, that it tends to polarize people's responses and reactions to each of you as individuals. And you, maybe this is like womanizer, not womanizer, or manizer, not man eater, that kind of thing. Over here though, with this person, it's very much people will, because this person's um, quiet in social scenarios. That's what I'm getting. They don't think you like a quiet person, but this person is quiet. And they're, um, so people polarize that and they'll either say this person is shy and um, withdrawn and insecure, or that this person is stuck up and judgmental and snobby. It'll go one, of the uh, of the ways with this person but neither are true this person is like strong gemini cancer energy and i do think they're very personable and they're very conversational but this person is very self-protective and that is evidenced by this cancer energy with the shell but also mars dominance um, tends to produce someone who's outwardly caustic and inwardly very beautiful and harmonious remember i was telling you this person actually has built up a very beautiful inner like sanctum yeah, and they, they're careful about who they share that with. That's the energy this person has. And funny enough, you might have noticed older women being very comfortable around this person. And that is because women as they age tend to idolize Mars dominant women who have a strong boundary between themselves and the external world and who are more um, judicious about who they share their feminine energy with. Right, and actually, maybe this person is picking up on this Jesha because Jesha needs feminine energy, right? They don't want someone who's judicious with their feminine energy. They want somebody who's slathering it on everywhere. <laughs> you know, maybe that's uh, young Jesha as they mature. They might want something a little different, but um, yeah, like that's that's the energy that this person has. Um, they're not standoffish. This person maybe that's their strong defense, right? Like, cause if you get in there, they're pretty beautiful and they're pretty giving and they're pretty open. And, and this is what I'm saying is like, this person doesn't have a confidence issue regularly, especially with this Helios energy. You're dealing with like a bright person and um, Helios has the golden cup. So like this person actually knows that they have a golden cup and they are also very like very forgiving and they just want to be like on to the next thing. That's like their, their overall attitude and demeanor. And they're trying to apply that like here. And they're trying to remind themselves that just because you don't like them, which you clearly do because you're at this reading, but this person really doesn't think you notice them. I mean, your back is towards them and they're in their shell. They're insular and your back is towards them and you are very much glued to this other person over here. Your eyes, your energy, everything about you is funneled into this person. And like I said, this person knows that they're not like this person. And they don't want to be like this person because they get too scared that if they started to play up there more like feminine attributes or more, you know, if they started to really play up their appearance or something, they would be afraid that they would get swept away by the material world. And they don't really want that. 
it doesn't feel right for this person. And so it caused them a lot of anxiety. Yeah. So it's weird that you're so polarized masculine and this person so polarized feminine. So this person, they do have a crush on you. They think everyone has a crush on you. They think that you like a different kind of person than them. Someone who's more, um, they very much put their feminine energy outward. Like, um, yeah. Um, maybe that they think that you like someone who's a bit of arm candy and this person would really not like to be arm candy because they are so spiritual. This person, not that you can't be arm candy and also spiritual, but it's a part of this person's spirituality, the way that they present their feminine side. This person might wear their hair up a lot. Um, they're very self-contained until you get to know them and then you have free reign. That's why they have such a strong boundary. Yeah. And this person feels like you are very self-focused, that you are very skillful, that you are very resourceful, and that you the actions that you take in the world are very inspired. Again, it's very masculine. All of that's very masculine lessons. And this person's drawn to that because they probably are learning a lot of masculine lessons. But somehow by way of like a bit of a bout of low self-esteem, then, okay, um, hold on here. Yeah, I think that maybe this person feels that it's bringing up some kind of like abandonment or something. I just think you overlook this person in general. Okay, so another thing to understand about this person, you might not have gotten this. This is actually a very competitive person that you're asking about. And they don't get involved. Like there's no way they can win. You know, it doesn't end well for anyone. So they're just going to move away. I think this person's focused on something. They're actually, you know what? This is, they're actually being more like you. They're cultivating some kind of skill that they have. They're working on their own mastery. They are being of service in the world to other people. That's what they're taking away from this is that they can almost borrow a bit of your energy, take a page from your book and like pour their energies into that. That's what this person seems to be doing. And, um, Yeah, they feel like they can't compete because either you're married to somebody here or um, they're just not what you want. That's what they think. They're, yeah, I'm hearing that Ingram Hill song. It's like, maybe I'm not what you want. And that is painful for this person to look at. And I think they originally did synthesize this as I'm not good enough. I'm like, there really is the vibe that you would just hand this person a broom or something. And it's like, oh, well, the only reason you're here is because you need to clean up after someone, <laughs> you know, like not because I want to like hold your hand or anything. Like that's how this person feels, which is wild because this person is considered beautiful by a great many people. I think you must consider this person beautiful if you're here. I mean, if I was just going off of these cards, that's not the impression I would get. I would think that you like a lot of people, but you don't like this person and you like this one other person in particular who is really in this person inside out. So yeah, there's a lot of fear here in this connection. I don't know what to make of that, honestly, but it's crazy that you're showing up so polarized masculine, this person so polarized feminine. So there, that just might be contributing to some kind of, you have such different worldviews and things like that and such different skill sets and things that, um, I don't know, maybe it's contributing to some kind of confusion. I hope that made some sort of sense for you guys, pile number one. This person absolutely has a crush on you. Just causes them a lot of anxiety. And so they are, either they already have moved away from this connection in no uncertain terms, or they absolutely will in the future. Emotionally for sure. And they're just not considering reopening that door. Even if you can have like surface level conversations with this person, they're just not going to dip into their emotions around you, about you. Like, so, okay. Um, I'm going to leave that there. So thank you guys for watching. If that resonated, please like comment and subscribe. Oh wait, let's get messages actually. Oh boy. I can't keep picturing you with them. Yeah. It's because them is very much different than they. Very different people. You are comfy blanket, big, big, you are comfy blanket, rainy morning, big breakfast vibes, and I love it. You're so different than I thought you'd be. I'm getting that this is a shared energy between you because 
you are actually coming off very strategic here in your own way. And I think people misinterpret your energy. People misinterpret this person's energy. And again, it is because you're so, this person's so polarized feminine and you're so polarized masculine. There's a side to me I'm not sure you would understand. Yeah, I think this person doesn't, they don't think you would understand why they are the way they are. And they think you'd frame it in one of those, pol this person has a wound around that, like getting, getting mislabeled. They think you would do one or the other. There's something fundamentally different between us. Oh boy. I think you may be the most compassionate person I've ever met. Like this is, this comes in with some skill set that you have to help other people in a very humanitarian way. I'm trying to give you hints about my feelings. This is not a direct person. Um, cancer moves to the side. They never go directly at whatever they want. They always kind of dance around it. Why won't you tell me how you really feel? I feel like this has to be your energy towards this person because they don't think you like them and this person is, their feelings are very much protected. I don't want to hurt you. Look, they don't want to hurt anyone. That's this person's whole vibe. They don't want to hurt anyone. I want to travel somewhere with you. That to me doesn't, it doesn't usually come off superficial, but that it's almost like they're going to punch you in the arm and be like, let's take a trip, man. <laughs> you know, instead of being like, let's maybe stick our tongues in each other's mouths. Like they're not going to say that. Instead, they're going to be like, they're trying to keep it friendly. Are you happy without me? This person, I don't think they feel they can make you happy. What would you think if you knew? Yeah, this person is like, what would you think if you knew that they liked you? Like, it's a whole thing for this person. You are my physical ideal. There is so many, there's so much sexual attraction here to this person and they're just not handling it well. It's almost like, it really is like an angel or like a priest or somebody got stuck in a human body that has like sexual urges and this person's like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> Your person's clearly a sexual person. They have Mars conjunct sun. They do. And, and Pusha itself is, it's known for its sexual excess. So it's like, um, I don't know. This person's all wrapped up in a knot about you here, but they absolutely do have crushes on you. So anyways, that is what I have for you guys. Pound number one. If that resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye.
All right, pile number two, does this person have a crush on you? Why, yes, I feel they do. And I think it's new. And it's coming through like as very curious, like the, like, like this person has a lot of questions around their newfound feelings and around you in general, because I get the sense that this, the way this person feels about you has recently changed. Like you've known this person from the past, um, for maybe, you know, a long period of time. I just, I get the sense that you were friends or you were business partners, or maybe somebody was like a mentor to someone else here. There's that kind of a situation. And there, it wasn't really like crushy or romantic feelings like that. It was nice. It felt nice, but it wasn't quite to that level in the past. But now something, I feel like you have changed. Oh my gosh. I'm hearing the song. Everything has changed. Um, so you've changed, this person's changed. And so the space between you has changed. And now, just like the song says, they this person just wants to know you better. Now that's where all this curious energy is really coming through. So, and I really think this person wants to communicate with you. They're definitely, like they're watching you here in some way in private. And for some of you guys, this person could even be like asking, I don't know, asking a reader about you or something, but it's because they want to reach out and send you some kind of a message. This person feels like you have illuminated something here in them and they actually feel like they have some kind of a key here for you. And both of them, funny enough, have to do with like this interaction between anxiety and control. Because I feel like this person sees you as having some kind of anxiety. I also feel like you moved away from this person, I think physically, but physically or emotionally, you moved away from this person in the past. Not just this person, but it looks like a whole space or a whole area. With the Six of Cups being here, this could be like a childhood home or you know something like that. But you moved away and this person had a lot of power in that space. They had done very well for themselves in that space. Maybe they are the manager, maybe they, I don't know, whatever it is, they, they did well there, but it wasn't working out for you, so you ended up leaving is what it looks like. And so now this person watches you and they are, they feel like you have a certain amount of anxiety and that you're searching for something. And I'm hearing this person ask in my mind, like, what is it that you're searching for? Again, there's that curiosity here about you and about, I'm hearing like who you really are. So this person thinks that they understand something about your anxiety and it has to do with like your emotional state because and I think it's tied to like trying to control certain outcomes and being afraid of like how something's going to turn out and not having control over that, you know, and that can cause you to um, start to spin your wheels emotionally and internally and energetically. This person has a control issue as well. It's just theirs shows up in a different way. So they have anxiety too, and they have a need to control, but it shows up in their life as this person has, I feel like brick by brick and painstakingly and very strategically built their life according to some kind of plan. We've been getting that energy recently. But yeah, according to some kind of plan where they were determined to be successful, they were determined to get the outcome that they wanted and they did that through their actions. And I really do feel that in this person's past, they had, they like never did anything without it having some kind of payoff for them. You know, they were very strategic about that. And that includes in their romantic relationships. If this person had many, I feel like this is more of like a sexual person where they have a lot of hookups and, um, so if this person could like, I don't know, smell a vulnerability or something, I feel like in the past they would have used that to get whatever it is that they wanted out of that person or out of that situation. And maybe they were even thinking about you in that, um, in that category as well, like before. But like I said, now everything has changed. And okay, so this really has the vibes of... I don't feel like this is matchy matchy like your scenario with this person for most of you, but it has this under undercurrent to it where it's like, I feel like there's gotta be teen movies out here like this where um, there's a preteen and a teenager and like the preteen has a crush on like the bigger teenager, you know, but the teenager doesn't look at the preteen like that because they haven't like grown up yet. 
and they're too little and they don't really even consider them like on that plane. But like they both grow up, they move away from home, they go to college, they go about their lives, whatever, and then they come back together and um, like they see each other in their hometown or something. And then the teenager one realizes that the preteen has actually very naturally matured and grown into become the person that they were looking for all along. So there's an element here where you were hidden in plain sight. And I feel like the universe, it's almost like this big cosmic joke here for this person. I mean, they're learning a lesson, don't get me wrong, but the universe is kind of amused with itself because here this person was, you know, trying to be very specific and very deliberate. Every brick had to be just perfect to get the outcome that they wanted. And then there you come floating by, <laughs> like on the lazy river, everything they ever wanted tied up in a neat package with a bow. And like you just, and the universe is just kind of leaning into that person. Like, don't you feel foolish? Well, wave to her. That is your everything floating down there. <laughs> That's the vibe. And this person's like, whoa, wait a minute. What was I doing over here? So this person's starting to realize that they need to release their need to control outcomes as well. So basically you're two sides of the same coin. I'm not sure that this person sees themselves so clearly in how their anxiety and their control still manifests a certain way. It's very masculine and yours is coming off very feminine. Um, yeah, so this is, you both have like illuminated something here for, for each other and this person, like I said, it's turned into this curiosity because I get the sense that this person is doing a lot of reflecting about the person that they have in front of them and the person that they used to, I don't know, that you used to be or the person that they thought you were that um, was like younger than them or not as well developed than them in their career and things like that. They're looking at those two, you know, six of cups is memories. So I feel like this person is kind of going through their memories and then they're watching you somehow online now and trying to reconcile the two because this person sees you in a number of different lights but all of it just leads to you being a bit mysterious to this person and with them just wanting to know more about you because this person knows that you're opposite than them in um almost every material way there could be like i think this person has really worked to be very well off very stable um very strategic in their career they built this whole fortress like that's what they've been doing and the two of wands is always like somebody who builds themselves up in something but for all their effort they've just walled themselves off and that's what i mean like the universe is like you can't even get to your person <laughs> look at all this work you put in <laughs> and you know that is also like kind of sad but it's this big cosmic joke of like oh the best laid man um, plans of mice and men often go awry it's that like learning how to just surrender is what this person's learning and they see you as someone who has mastered the art of surrender who is very creative and you do have this quality to you where you go with the flow, you follow what it is that you love and um, like in a very pure kind of a way and that you don't need to have like this, your control doesn't manifest the same way, you know? So here you are just, you're covered in paint, you don't even have shoes on, you're just chilling by the river with your cat, you know? And you're just enjoying nature and the birds in the early morning and that's enough for you and so, this person feels like in a way you're like very much opposite than them, but they also, like I said, they see you as being somewhat anxious and um, that you're looking for some kind of fulfillment as well. You're both looking for fulfillment. You've looked in the opposite places. So it's almost like if you swap notes, you know, maybe you'll figure out where that fulfillment lies, you know? Um, yeah, so this person feels like you moved away from them, maybe even in secret, because I think this person struggles to see you now. Um, and they want a new beginning with you with the ace of cups and you know this is a new beginning in in love and they want peace and they want harmony but the ace of cups for me it's always a very just pure love you know um and that's a big deal for this person because like i said i feel like in the past this person didn't do anything without it having some kind of big benefit or some kind of payoff and now they're learning that when you just surrender to life and when you say Things like, this came out in a Patreon reading, things like, you know, or no, maybe it was a personal reading I was explaining this, where it's like, if you just try, you know, if you're like, my goal is to be happy, you know, and you trust that the universe knows better than you what is going to make you happy, then that is a really good place to apply your surrender. It's not that you don't then have, like from there you'll have ideas and you'll pay attention to what you gravitate towards or what you gravitate away from or serendipities that come in front of you. But um, this person instead, like, I don't know, they were very, 
manual about the way they went to build their life. And they, like I said, they want a new beginning here with you. They want to like be your soulmate. And this is such a big deal for this person, you guys. It really, really is because, um, and this is how you're going to, this is how they show their love. Like when they are truly in love is they actually restrain themselves and they try to overcome their lower impulses and they want to grow uh, into their higher self. They'll actually, they'll commit to that struggle, you know, when they love you and, I think this person, they're not like full on in love with you, right? It's just like sweet, innocent love. And it's multidimensional. Like this person sees you as a friend. And I feel like what this person actually wants is they want to help you. And there is a sense here, and I'm just letting you know because there's counterpart energy here between you. Like this person's coming off as Jesha and Jesha energy came out strong in pile number one. So some of you might want to check that out. Um, but yeah, your person's showing up as Jesha, which is the male deer. And then you are showing up as counterpart on Yurata, which is the female deer and Jesha, that male deer energy. Like I can't remember the name of this. I never can, but deers go into this like crazy rut state where they just are like frenzied, you know, and they get overtaken by that. So this person has that quality and that can lead them into situations sexual situations that can cause a lot of pain. And that was another theme that came out in pile number one. It can cause a lot of destruction. It can cause a lot of harm um, for themselves and for other people. And so its counterpart actually ends up helping with this because Anurata is not that energy. Anurata is uh, an energy that really does need to fall in love for them to be able to have a sexual relationship and find fulfillment from it. And if when they, and they can, Anurata actually can get sucked into abusive relationships and tough dynamics, most of the time it's when they confuse lust for love. And maybe you don't wanna do that. Maybe that's something that you are like illuminating. You're trying to make sure that you're not just lustful for this person and that you actually love this person. And this person actually likes the challenge of showing up for you in that loving way, you know, and planning out nice dinners for you. They want that. They This person will actually take a lot of pride in you being peaceful and you being happy and you being fulfilled, come, like coming down from this anxious state. Because I think they know that if they were to be how they were before in the past of just selfish and, you know, trying to get whatever it is that they're trying to get out of the world that, um, and out of people around them, that that would contribute to your anxiety. And this person doesn't want to. They want to hold themselves back. Now, I do feel like this person wants to send you some kind of a message. And you might get the vibes from this person. They want to come back. They want a reunion with you. If this person does come back, don't be surprised if they don't make moves on you. Like, I mean at all. Because this person really wants to be mirroring your energy, which is giving with no expectation, right? Just surrendering, not trying to control the outcome of your situation. And that is a way that they're demonstrating their love. And they, they want it to be no strings attached. They don't want to expect anything from you. They just want to help you. They just want to like give to you. Um, yeah. And so I don't even think this person's going to hit on you or anything like that. So don't be, don't be surprised if like, that's the energy that they come back to you in. And yeah, I mean, this person really does want to work on that side of themselves now. I feel that they really, really do because you've illuminated this here. You were, in a way, you were this person's liberator. And that's that's actually what I was kind of in a roundabout way trying to give you a heads up on. Like, if you truly are in this Anurata energy, that is a notorious pitfall for that place in the Zodiac is um, they're very strong, but they... Um, that usually has come from going through cycles where they can be sucked into relationships that aren't good for them. And we talk a lot about the rescuer, um, victim, persecutor dynamic. And I highly suggest you look into it. It's called the three faces of the victim. But we talk about that dynamic a lot on this channel. And this person a little bit does want to be your rescuer. Um, it's just something like to keep an eye out. Like a lot of times people can be our rescuers and they can be our liberators, but it's like, it's not usually their intent. And then you don't get sucked into the drama triangle, but I'm just letting you know that it could, it could go either way with this person and just to be aware of it. So yeah, this person wants to, they might, the way that you will know this person like loves you and is serious, they'll go above and beyond in whatever their work situation is or, um, to help you. This person will, um, like, I don't know, it's like even if they're tired, but if you ask them to help you with something, like they'll still help you with it. 
and they'll take on certain like responsibilities. They'll take things off your plate, little things like that. This person really does want to, to, they want to help you find what it is that you're looking for. And I think they think you're looking for some peace and they think you're in it for the long haul here. I think romantically speaking, they can sense that with this page of pentacles, that if they get involved with you, it's like going to be for the long haul, but also that there's something in your life that is more materially focused that you are focused on for the long haul. So does this person have a crush on you? Yes, they do. I feel like it's new. I feel like everything has changed and it doesn't have the energy of a glow up. Just so you know, I want to say that because for me, a glow up, I'm going to pull messages from them too, just in case any of you are thinking about clicking off, but the inner, like, I feel like a glow up, you can kind of bring that on for yourself. You're like, I'm going to work out or I'm going to eat better or whatever. This to me feels more natural. Like it's just a natural maturation that you have undergone. You were always going to grow into this person. You were always going to fill yourself out in this type of way. And it was always going to be exactly what this person wanted the whole time. And so now this person wants to help you. They want to be of service to you. They want to be kind to you. They want to interact with you in a way that is not self-fulfilling and just see where it goes. You know, this person finds you to be a mystery. They think that you are very strong. They're seeing you in like friend or partnership energy. Um, they're seeing you as like a very cooperative person. I think you might live far away from home, either like where it is that you're from or you're far away from them, like at the current time. Um, yeah, and that you're very, um, there's something here about being dutiful or very values driven like that's some and you are dedicated to that so yeah this person does have a crush on you and they're doing they're thinking about you a lot they're thinking about your memories together they're thinking about who you are now I mean this person's almost flabbergasted I think I used that term in another reading recently yeah this person's almost flabbergasted at the transformation at the way that things have have transformed so let's get messages from this person <clears throat> what would you think if you knew that came out in pile number one? And like I said, there's so many similarities and I explained gesture energy, which is the energy your person's coming out in. I explained that a lot more in pile number one too. If you're more curious about that, I'm not who I seem to be. And look, this person's cloaked. So I want to hold on to that one for a second. I want to see you. This person wants to see you. I think you're far away from them. They want to see you, but they also want to see you. You know what I mean? They want to pop the hood. They want to know what's under there. I actually think this person also wants to see your body. My feelings for you are secret because this person's very strategic. Look, they're so cloaked. Yeah, they are very cloaked. I see you're doing well. It's really amazing to see. Yeah, you have undergone a transformation here. And it and you're beautiful. Maybe they're seeing you in this Hakate energy, which is she's a torch bringer, she's a light bringer to the darkest of places. I think that's you filled that role in their life and they want to do that for you too. Do you like them? I can't compete. So there might be somebody else here that this person feels like you might like or have a crush on that they can't compete with. I'm currently in a toxic relationship that I don't know how to get away from. Yes, this person, I kind of feel, I wonder if this person's in many, um, has many different situations going on, but um, the toxic relationship could be with like materialism or with themselves. Um, I feel like this person overall has built a life for themselves and maybe that does include a relationship, but they've built a life for themselves that is they're realizing is toxic to their soul and that they don't know how to step away from it. They don't know how to be in a different mode modus of operating, but they feel like they can start practicing with you. You're really good at what you do. I really admire you. There's a lot of admiration coming through here. And you're seen as someone who's very creative and who is um, a mentor maybe to other people. I'm not ready for something serious. Yeah, this person isn't ready for something serious, but the potential is there. And I feel like that is what's new is because this person was never ready for something serious, I feel like. They were just always, I just feel like this person can be very lusty. 
You are an amazing leader. Look, this person has so much praise for you. Just ignore this nervous preening. Why am I so sweaty? You know what? That's funny because I was half hearing, um, cause I was hearing everything has changed by Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran, but there's a song by Taylor Swift. It's old and it's called the story of us. The story of us looks a lot like a tragedy now, but she says, um, at one point, see me nervously pulling at my clothes and trying to look busy and you're doing your best to avoid me. So maybe that's your dynamic right now with this person. You are such a good listener. All these are compliments. It's all about you. And it's like, yeah, you're such a good listener. You're an amazing leader. You're so good. Like, what kind of food do you like? Yeah, see, now this person's curious about you and what kind of food you like. <laughs> There's so much I want to say, but haven't. So this person might be quiet. They might be keeping to themselves. I don't even know who I am anymore. Yeah, this person, because you know, with this illumination energy and she illuminates Hakate goes to the de like the deepest, she goes to the eighth house basically. And she, cause she's not scared. She, she goes after Persephone. Some people think she's an evil energy. She's absolutely not. It is the people with the strongest light and the people who are courageous that go into the dark areas, knowing and trusting their own inner light. And I feel like this person sees you in that energy. This is the energy of Anurata because Anurata is like, it's a bright light in the darkness. And that's how you are to this person. It's like you're this person's personal lighthouse. And I'm not who I seem to be. There are a lot, again, I feel like this person has anxiety. Their anxiety just comes through like this builder energy the strategic energy, that's what it comes through. Like, and this person, I feel like they're curious about you and they want you to be curious about them too. There is almost a sense of like you guys needing to get to re-know each other or something. Again, that came out in pile number one. So for some of you, I feel like this in pile number one, like these are very inverted piles. So, um, yeah, so this person does have a crush on you. It's new, they're sensitive. This is a person who maybe has not been in touch with their feelings. Instead, they've been trying to control their environment in order to build their own outcome that they wanted, their own vision of success. And so this is a big karmic lesson that this person is learning. And I feel the universe is a little bit, you know, um, having a little laugh at the irony of all of this and how it's like coming out here for this person. Not like an evil laugh, but just like, oh, you've got so much to learn. See if, you know, like you, there you just come floating down the, <laughs> floating down the river. And um, I don't know, it's almost like the universe was like, that was always gonna happen. I was always gonna take care of you, you know? Um, but this person seems to have got, like built themselves into a corner to where maybe they really feel like they can't reach out to you and they can't help you. And this person really wants to help you. So that's what I have for you guys, pile number two. Does this person have a crush on you? Yes, they do, it's new. They feel like you have changed and you have grown and you have matured. And so because of that, everything has changed. And this person wants to change as well. So, yeah. And they want, and I just want to say another thing about like Jesha and Anurata, Jesha really does like to play chivalrous for Anurata, really likes to plan really nice dates. And like over there we had, um, you know, what kind of food do you like? You know, this person might be, in, they like to be a planner. They like to like kind of live up to that, you know? Um, and they see you as someone because Jesha usually sees Anurata as someone who can be sexually fulfilling, but also emotionally fulfilling. And that's why they want to commit to Anurata. Not that it wouldn't be a struggle, but you know, that's, that is the energy there. So anyways, I'm going to leave that there for you guys. Pile number two. Um, if that resonated, please like comment and subscribe to my channel. Bye guys.
right, pile number three. All these piles were a yes, how interesting. Everybody just must be looking their best, keeping fresh, being out there, charming the pants off of people. <laughs> so this is another yes for you guys. This is, um, this person, they are watching you. Yeah, they're definitely watching you. This is a very masculine person I think that you're asking about. I would be very surprised if it isn't. Um, but that you really stand out here to this person. I feel that this is a person who is used to people trying to get their attention, but they don't really fall for that. And I think there's one person in particular who is maybe trying to get this person's attention and they're trying to be very alluring and, um, yeah, and it's just really not working because this person has like all systems go kind of just pointed at you. Um, and you seem to be out doing your own independent thing. I feel like for a lot of you, there's a sense of prominence about you within a group of people. Um, and it could have to do with your career, but or it could have to do with something that you are very passionate about. And this person sees like that you do have a sense of pride about you. I love myself and I see myself in everyone. So I feel like even though you're, you're, um, you have pride in whatever it is that you're doing, for a career, for some kind of nurturing, for something you're doing around your home, whatever this is that you're doing that you're very passionate about, this person sees that you are not rude about it towards other people, that you are very encouraging of other people and you don't think that you're better than other people, you know, just because you are you take a certain stance on something or you are out there trying hard for things. So this person is really super enamored with you or very intrigued by you. There's a strong soulmate connection here. Like I said, I feel that you just kind of stand out to this person and especially like moon type of qualities is what this person sees in you. Somebody who is very warm and tender and nurturing. I think there's a strong sense of like, maybe wanting to merge families with you or build a family with you or live in the same home as you and create a warm home, whatever one of those resonates. I feel like this person, they feel like you guys are soulmates and they feel like they, this is also a proud person. Okay. And they believe in taking very calculated risks, emphasis on the calculated part. So I do get a sense that this person is watching you. Like, especially, I don't know, I, I get a sense that you're prominent here on something in regards to a group that you're always posting in or something. You really stand out here to this person. And this person's kind of like watching you from a distance so that they know, um, they kind of want to present themselves a certain way to you. They want to morph themselves almost into what it is that would be your fantasy and that would catch your eye. So I'm not sure how healthy of an approach that is, but I, I think this is happening on a gradient where for a lot of your people, and honestly, I feel for most of your people here, this is just a way of catching your attention so that you can see what's already there with them. It doesn't feel um, like it's malintended, but um, keep in mind, like this does happen on a gradient. So for some of your people, they could be trying to lie, you know, or they could be trying to deceive you and who they really are and instead put some kind of fantasy person in front of you. But I feel like the person you're asking about is very well developed in themselves and they are like pretty adaptable and they are multifaceted and they have many different sides and they want to show you all of those sides. It's just, they want to know what's going to catch your attention because thus far, this person actually feels like they haven't been able to get your attention at least in the way that they want, which is romantic, because you're coming through as someone who is very, um, maybe cerebral, you know, um, I'm hearing enter nose stuck in a book, <laughs> um, from Beauty and the Beast, but I feel like maybe you're studying something. You're always trying to develop your mind. You could always be reading something around this person. Maybe some of you are students or you're in a program. You could be doing some kind of continuing education or working on a, on something that requires you to do a lot of problem solving. And this person, whenever you're around this person, they feel like you are in your head and that, um, or you're, you're busy doing whatever it is that you're doing and you're not paying attention to them. You're not seeing the potential in them and you're not seeing them as 
a higher cup. Like as, you know, with the four of cups down here as like, yeah, as a potential love interest that this could actually go all the way. Um, and this person's kind of trying to get you to see them in that way, but they're doing it very passively and very strategically. They're trying to like, they're trying to get you to almost realize it, but they're active in that process. It's almost like they're funneling you down a tunnel, you know, and at the end of the tunnel, there is this realization that they are a perfect partner for you that can provide a lot to you that other people and partners and places and things cannot provide. And this person takes a lot of pride in that. I think this is a person who takes a lot of pride in whatever it is that they do for a living. This is also a person who has a lot of goals. And I just want to be upfront about this. They see you as someone who can help them reach their goals. And some of their goals are more material. So I think that, and, and, Somebody here could have been going through a hard time. I don't think it is you. I, I I think maybe, I don't know. Both of you look really strong, but with this moon energy, I'm feeling like, uh, I don't know. There could have been a dip here for somebody. And either this person's looking at this as an opportunity to help you, or they are maybe looking for a way to help. Maybe that's, we get that energy sometimes. Or this person has taken a bit of a dip and they see you as someone who can um, help them, you know, achieve their goals or something like that. This person, like they want nice things in life and they see you as someone like, especially a nice home. And I feel like that's on multiple levels. They want a nice home that is physically appealing and it's clean and it's safe. And maybe it is luxurious because the moon can be a luxury card, but they also want it to feel nice. You know, they want it to feel like a home and they feel like you are someone who can help it, help that to um, come to some kind of fruition. I feel like this person can get jealous. They really want to get you. And like, I feel like this person might even be, like I said, they're, they're watching you. They're, Sir Nunnus is a hunter. Like, I feel like this person is almost hunting you, not in like, you know, the most dangerous game sort of way. <laughs> Some of you are like, why did I click on this video? Why do I continue to click on her videos? <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. And this person, okay. So here's another like thing that you might've noticed because I kind of feel like this person has friends. They're trying to be so subtle about this, but it's so strategic. I feel like this person can have friends that talk to you, but it's in like a casual sort of way. And it's in an effort to do a couple of things like, First of all, I feel like they're trying to find out different information about you. Again, so this person sort of, it, it's coming off like a Hitch vibe. You remember the movie Hitch where he would like plan these, he would help his clients plan, you know, this very perfect, like well thought out date, you know, and he would, he was always making a point of like paying attention. So when he first meet, when Will Smith's character Hitch meets Eva Mendez's character and he pays attention to what she's drinking, and after the other guy had gotten it wrong, this person is trying to pay attention to you so that they can do the right things for you to make you um, like them and take interest in them. And, and this is somebody who does like to provide, but you know, I feel like people use the word provider in different ways. Some people use it as like somebody who can provide, you know, what you need in life and a sense of stability and security and structure and um, love you know, and then other people tend to use it like as someone who can provide luxury and excess. And I feel like this person intends to provide some type of excess in your life, something that feels very comfortable and, and luxurious. Honestly, they think you like that. Maybe they think that's a hidden bed pleasure you have. I don't know what would give them that idea, except for, I think this person has their friends around you. <laughs> so, um, that's what I was kind of saying is um, I do feel this person has friends that are trying to get to know a little bit about you, trying to find out what your hobbies, your interests, your likes are, and then they're reporting back. And then I also think another aspect of this is that they're maybe planting seeds in your mind where it's like you're, you could be reading a certain book and they'll be like, oh, so-and-so has already read that book and super loves that book, you know, just to kind of plant that in your mind. So before this person sort of makes themselves or their intentions known to you, you already have an idea of them that, that they're like a soulmate, that they are somebody who has a lot of common interests and that you could really build with. 
Um, another thing is that this these friends could be inviting you to events or places where this person is going to be, but also where this person can paint themselves in a really good light and maybe showcase some kind of skill or beauty that they have, um, including like a really nice home or a really nice, they get to wear their nice dress or their nice suit, whatever it is. Um, show off their, like I said, like their artistic talents and just be very charismatic and happy and harmonious to you. And this person, I think they really do, when they love you, and I think this person's on their way to that, this feels like they're tr still in the stage where they're trying to get your attention though. Um, but when this person loves you, they try to be everything for you. And that might not be the healthiest impulse, I'm not gonna lie, you know? Um, because after a while, you probably just be like, well, what do you want to do? Who are you in this relationship? You don't always have to cater to me, you know? And like I said, I feel like that, you know, it's going to be on a gradient. Whether how like healthy of an aspect this is coming from this person. But this person has accomplished a lot. And I feel like they have strong leadership energy. And they see that you have strong leadership energy. But it does feel very masculine and feminine. So I don't know what this person does. They seem like they have hunter energy. They're good at like, I don't know getting resources and mapping out the land or and orienting themselves direction wise. I don't know, like something like that, but they see you as someone who's like passionate. Maybe you are a healer um, or you've healed yourself. They see you as someone independent, somebody whose energy is prominent, but it might not be in the same way that theirs is. Some of you could just be well known within a group of people. But yeah, this person's really frustrated that they can't seem to get your attention or they can't get you to, to see them in the light that they want you to see them in, which is I can really provide you everything. I can be, I'm hearing Savage Garden. I'll be your dream, I'll be your wish, I'll be your fantasy. Knight of Cups, fantasy. This person wants to romance you as well. They just wanna give you everything. They think you might be a little bored with like people's offers or, um, yeah, they want to give you something they feel like you haven't experienced before. And honestly, I feel this person's intentions are serious towards you. They see this as something that can grow into a longer term thing. I think this person's hidden bed pleasures might be um, luxury. They might like to see you in like, I don't know what a good thread count is, but you know, whatever that is of sheets and that you're all soft and comfortable. This person wants to put, yeah, like you in a nice house. Maybe they see that you already have a nice house. That's for some of you. Maybe it's by water. Could live abroad from them. They just see you as just a beautiful person. I think they see you as tied to something though. They're curious about where you come from, your family of origin. They have questions about that. And hmm, maybe they think your home is a private space. They like that though. Yeah. I, I kind of want to say this though, like this this person is about the material aspects of things that is important to them. Like, I don't know how you feel about that, but I just want to say you seem to have something or there's like the promise of something that can come to fruition in the material world. And that does, this person thinks you're their soulmate and that factors into it. And I just want you to know that. This person thinks you're so sexy and so independent. And there's a sense that you're small. So maybe you're smaller than them or you're younger than them or you don't have quite as high of, of a position, but there's a sense of the small overcoming the large here. This person is so sexually attracted to you. Like I can't even get over it. And they want to show you like what they can do in that department. They really, really do. And I think they want to show you what they're working with. You get what I'm saying? Um... Yeah, this person, I'm hearing, I want it all and I want it now. <laughs> so this person thinks you're everything and they wanna give to you. 
Okay, let me get some messages from this person. Oh wow, that's a lot of them. This person is, okay, look, F boy, F girl tactics. That's kind of, this person has tactics, okay? And I do just wanna make the distinction that just because someone is using certain tactics doesn't necessarily make them an F boy or F girl. Um, maybe they're reformed, I don't know, but it also, it's a possibility. So just take that however it resonates. Oh, but look, this is a warning from the universe. Keep your wits about you. Okay, so these two together, it's not giving me a great feel. Um, I'm protecting someone. Okay, maybe this person's already with someone, but I also get the sense that they're protecting themselves because like I said, this is a proud person and they wanna make sure that they take calculated risks and whatever it is that they do is gonna land. I wanna know more about you. Yeah, so this person is like studying you. They definitely, they have access to your social media. They're, they're asking friends about you or they're sending their friends in to learn about you and to plant seeds about them. I am wishy-washy. This isn't shaping up great. <laughs> I've never felt this way before. What is this feeling? I do feel like you've captivated this person here in some way. Just maybe by your indifference? I'm not sure. I don't wanna hurt you, so I'm already gone. Okay, let's get these messages out and then we'll start to, I love talking with you, you're so interesting. You really do stand out to this person. And you've, I, you're, I think you're a very intellectual person, you're always learning things, you have a good take on things that this person finds, they like that. You make connecting with people seem effortless. I strongly get that with this energy over here. I've been through worse, I'll be fine. Hmm. I'm not where I wanna be, I'm working towards my goals. And this person does have a lot of goals. I have the biggest crush on you, yeah. So, there's your answer on this crush reading, huh? I wish I could take back my words. This is a very interesting pile. I go places I hope you'll be at. That's this hunter energy. I picture a world where we can be together. That's what this is. And they picture giving you the world. I hate being vulnerable. I knew, calculated risks. What did I say? I triangulate people. That's part of those F boy, F girl tactics. They might try to make you compete for their attention. And th remember I said this person's used to that and then there you're not doing it. And then now this person's like, I've never felt this way before. <laughs> what is this? I wanna do sex with you. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. they do. I'm bad at communicating my feelings. Okay. I'm hiding something from you. I think it's they're hiding their entire feelings from you until they feel that calculated risk was gonna pay off. I don't feel good enough for you. Maybe it's these F boy, F girl tactics. My job has been really stressful. It's all I really think about. Hmm. I'm protecting myself. So we have I'm protecting someone and I'm protecting myself. I have doubts. This person has doubts as to whether or not they can even pull this off. That's what I'm hearing. Like that you're even going to pay attention to them or give them the time of day. I'm afraid you won't understand. Oh, wow. I feel powerless. You communicate with me through music. I am being a coward. Wow. This, I'm, I don't know why I'm so caught off guard by these messages, and there's so many. I sneak glances at you when you aren't looking. Yeah, and you're often not looking in this person's opinion. I wanna make it up to you. What, what did this person do? Maybe they had a choice between you and someone or like being with you and taking a job somewhere else. Maybe there was like this choice energy here. I'm struggling with my life right now. It doesn't have anything to do with you. This person's having a struggle. 
Um, okay, so I knew it. Oh, remember I said with the moon, yeah, that somebody here is having a struggle. And actually this person feels like your presence could be very healing and it can help them achieve their goals and things like that. So I think that's something to be aware of, you know, um, when you're, when, um, when you're thinking about this person is that they are, they're going through like some kind of a difficult time here right now. And they feel like a partnership would, with you would be a good thing. Um, but they're being really passive. They're having all these sexual feelings, but they, they're feeling very impotent. And, um, I feel like, I feel this person's being reflective about their behavior and about themselves. I feel like it's a really good sign somewhere we had, um, that they're already gone. They don't want to hurt you. So they're already gone. And then, yeah. And all of that is like kind of tying in with maybe this person, because they could have, this is a person, I almost said this earlier, but I didn't want to because I don't want to scare, like, I want to scare some of you away, but this is happening on a gradient. So just take what resonates. This could be a person who has a habit of shape shifting in every relationship that they're in, you know, um, they like to watch the, the person they're with and they almost become like what they know that person wants. And that's how they get their people, which is kind of a concerning habit because it's like, you, you know, who are you in a relationship? So if you know something about this person's relationship history and you know, like, well, one of their partners was super into cooking. So this person was like, I'm a master chef. And another one was into scuba diving and they wanted to all of a sudden scuba dive every major coast in the world or, you know, whatever it is, this person, it's like interesting that they're coming through so masculine because that doesn't, but they, they're wishy-washy like that. Why are they so wishy-washy? Oh, okay. So I feel like this person has a bit of like shiny syndrome, like squirrel, you know, um, whatever's in front of them. Yeah, they live a lot in their head and they, um, this is someone who could make themselves into a pressure cooker. So I don't really know. I, I feel like I'm trying to put the puzzle of this person together and I just, I don't have enough, I can't. So just, I don't know, be aware of these things. But does this person have a crush on you? Yes, they absolutely do. It's a big one. They've never felt this way before. I feel like you've got this person reflecting on um, maybe their fears and their current situation that might not be going so well. And, um, and also on their goals, you might be making a lot of progress towards your goals right now, or you're very passionate about what you're doing and you're in strong leadership energy. And this person has leadership energy too, but maybe they're going through a bit of a dip. And um, they just, I feel like you make them feel really, really happy. But they are trying to get your attention. And there's a lot here. <laughs> so anyways, that's what I have for you guys. Pile number three. If it resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye guys.